Hey, welcome back for another listen to some of the sounds in the Hammond XK5 organ. A few videos ago, we looked at the pipe organ sounds that are part of the Hammond XK5. Last time, I did the sampling of the Vox Continental sounds that are part of the organ. That actually caused a bit of controversy. It seems that you know people who are really familiar with the authentic Vox Continental and who really know that sound, um, one of the things that was pointed out was the the mixture is what apparently really sets apart the authentic Vox from some of the pretenders, I guess we'll call them. Um, and that's a particular sound in the Vox category that um, several people who, who watch that pointed out as being a key difference between the real thing and an emulation. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to look at the last set of non-Hammond sounds that are part of the XK5 behind me, and that's the Farfisa organ sounds. And to the extent that the Vox samples caused a little bit of you know controversy, I suspect the Farfisa would be even more so. And so let me just set the stage to the beginning right here. There's, There were many more versions of Farfisa organs produced, to my knowledge, than there were Vox organs. And with the Farfisa organs, different layouts, um, as an example, several years ago, I was in the studio with the Willard Overstreet band. We recorded the album All We Are, and there was a track on that called um, Don't Wake Me. When we got into the studio, there was a, an actual Farfisa organ there, a Farfisa compact, and I used that on that particular song. So if you, if you check that out, I mean, that'll give you um, a sampling of what that sounds like. If you've heard the rock and roll classic Crocodile Rock by Elton John, the organ sound that starts out that song, that's a Farfisa organ. So that's that's that sound. And we've heard it on uh, so many classic recordings through primarily, I think, through the 1960s. Um, people have used that on occasion since the 60s. Again, I just a couple of years ago used that on a, a recording that I made. Now, when we listened to the Vox, the Vox Continental actually had draw bars on it, not as many as are on the uh, Hammond organ, but that's um, there was somewhat of a similarity in terms of how the uh, sounds are pulled by the organist. The Farfisa, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, um, most of the ones that I've ever played didn't even have draw bars. I think there are some versions of Farfisa, perhaps, that are out there with draw bars. But the ones that I've ever played, the real, the real instruments, just had um, on and off tabs for the sound. So it was either the sound fully on or the sound fully off. And depending on the model of Farfisa that you had, you had a, a different array of sounds. So... Among the differences on the Hammond XK5 is the variety of stops that Hammond selected, you know, are going to be different than some of the actual Farfisa organs that you will come across in real life. And if you come across something like the Farfisa Compact, which I'm familiar with playing where it just had, you know, on or off, one benefit that you'll have on working on similar sounds on the XK5 is that they are connected to the draw bars where the draw bar does control the volume of the sound. So it isn't just full on or full off. You do have that nuance of volume as you select the sounds. And then lastly, you know, Hammond with the nine draw bars available for, for sound selection, they've taken advantage of those and they've given us nine tones of Farfisa organ on the XK5. They're the same sounds on both manuals if you have the two manual version. So I'm going to go through the sounds so you can hear them. This time, as opposed to when I did the Vox, I'll try to try to turn the reverb off so you can just hear the, the pure sound. And again, this is not to say that this has given you the authentic Farfisa experience. I think, you know, again, compared to the Vox, much less so. But it does open up a palette of more sounds. So, you know, with this organ, you get several varieties of actual Hammond organ sounds, 
Some are listed on here as A100 or B3 or C3 or what they call mellow. So four different varieties of traditional Hammond organ sounds. You do have the form factor, the classic form factor here. So that's just wonderful. And in addition, if that wasn't enough, to have extra pipe organ sounds, vox organ sounds, and farfisa sounds, to me that's just bonus. So even if it isn't authentic, 100% like the real thing, they're really nice approximations and they do open up the organ palette. So with that, let's go take a listen to some of the sounds that are labeled farfisa on the XK5. So Hammond gives us nine different tones in the farfisa bank. They're all of the um, pure tone variety. So none of these are labeled as mixtures, which is something that we did have with the Vox bank in here. We have two sounds that are in the 16 foot octave. We have four sounds in the eight foot octave and then three sounds in the four foot octave. So that rounds out kind of the way the sounds are laid out. So I'm just gonna go through these one at a time. And as I wanted to remember, I am turning off the reverb this time. So hopefully what you're gonna hear is the pure sound. I don't have any other effects styled on here. I'm just double checking. Chorus vibrato is off. Leslie is off. There we go. So we'll hear the, the pure tones to start with. Um, so let's start with the 16 foot. So the first one is listed as bass 16 and it sounds like this. The next one is a string 16, so same octave register, but a different uh, timbre. That one to me sounds a little bit more reminiscent of what I what I you know, think of when I when I think about farfisas. Moving on to the eight foot stops, our first one is a flute eight. Our next variety is what they label the oboe eight. So kind of more, more reedy character, you know, I think I'll, I'll buy that. Then we have a trumpet eight. And our last eight foot sound is the strings eight. And then our last three stops are the four foot variety. So we have a four foot, bleh, we have a four foot flute. Then we go to a piccolo four foot. And our last sound is a strings four foot. So that was the sounds individually. Um, I've pulled out just the draw bars at random. They're all out to, to some extent. This will give you a sense, again, without any effects, no reverb, no chorus vibrato, no anything else. But when you have several of these pulled out all at once, what the sound is like. And if you remember Crocodile Rock, that might 
<laughs> ring a little bell, sounds something like this. So that, that, that kind of sound. Um, there is also two tones available for the bass. So I'm just going to engage that with the pedal lower on here and uh, play it on the keyboard. So this is the draw bar that's labeled 16. Um, there's not a description of what they call the sound in the manual, but there is a bass sound. Now if I pull out the 8, and then if I uh, throw out just some random draw bars um, for the top end and add it to my bass, So, so let's do this. Let's listen to the uh, chorus vibrato. And what I'm going to do is I've got the same set of, of draw bar poles on the upper manual and the lower manual. So same tones, right? But I'm going to engage the chorus vibrato C3 on the top. And uh, we'll go back and forth from one manual to the other so you can hear what the Farfisa sounds or like with the chorus vibrato. So without... And with... And for the... Um, for the Farfisa, I think it's also pro probably fitting for the character of the sound with chorus vibrato to try it with the vibrato option, so I've got the uh, the V3 on, so we'll do without, and then upper manual with. So that's a little bit of that, and then uh, I think the last thing that we'll try here is uh, just some flavors of this with the Leslie. So we'll start with that, and then I'll move to Leslie slow, and then we'll go to Leslie fast, and we'll stop with no Leslie. So figure something out here. So that, I think, is going to round out my overview of different things about the Hammond XK5, at least from the other sounds perspective. If you have any questions, drop them into the comments. I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. If there's something else you'd like to hear that I haven't hit in the few demos that I've done, let me know and I'll see if I can put together another video. And this is coming on the heels of I just visited the NAMM show in Los Angeles actually in Anaheim, California, just a few days ago, where they debuted the Hammond XK4. So that was really interesting. That seems like it's gotten a lot of attention. Um, I will say the things that intrigue me about that instrument is the weight, first and foremost. It's so much lighter than the Hammond XK5. This instrument, most of the time, stays at home, one, because it's so heavy, and second, because it's so... Um, 
wide from the front to the back. I can't move this on my own. So this one doesn't get moved unless I have someone at the house to help me pack it up. And then when I get to wherever I'm going, I need somebody to help me with it too. So um, this is a phenomenal instrument, but when you've got the two manual, it is more difficult to transport. So that's something to be known. The, uh, the thing that I love about it, though, is the form factor is just about identical to the, to the real thing. A few additions, but sitting at this is very much, I mean, you'll, you're at home if you're familiar with um, a traditional A100, B3, or C3 Hammond. And um, it's just nice to be able to have the form factor that's familiar, to have the presets on that extra octave on the bottom of the keyboard. You don't have the extra octave keys on the new XK4, but you do have presets available on the face of the organ. My understanding also is that there is a multi-contact option in the new XK4. When I've read about it and when I've seen some videos, they keep referring to it as virtual multi-contact, which makes me think it's engineered somewhat differently than on the XK5. On this one, you've got three, I believe they're physical multi-contact points. I, they say what I've heard on the XK4 is that you have nine virtual multi-contacts. So it, it's a different design. The fact that there's a multi-contact engineering at all is really nice because to me that, that feature is one of the things that really sets this emulation apart from just about anything else that I've played in the Hammond world. Um, and yeah, so I do love this instrument use it all the time. Uh, again, primarily though in, in the home space, recording, preparation, I'll hook up my computer and uh, run hopped work through it. So I use it in a whole bunch of ways. Fantastic instrument. And hopefully helpful to you for, you know, figuring out if you don't have this instrument, if it's something that you're interested in. And now we also do have a new option with the XK4. So it's probably never been a better time to be choosing Hammond type instruments because they're, they're probably more accessible than they've ever been. The price points are great. You've got different options to choose from and the engineering, at least in the, um, the post analog age, has never been better than the choices we have available to us today. So that's gonna do it. Thanks again for watching. Happy music making and we'll see you down the road with some more videos in the music world. Bye.